Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and welcome to the Box Hard Podcast. Hello, everyone. This is Mikey Garcia. Yo, it's your boy, the odd guy himself, Malik King Scott. Hi, I'm Charlie Edwards. This is Fast Eddie Chambers, and you're listening to the Box Hard Podcast with my main man, Joey Kosmo. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 96 of the Box Hard Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Coastman. For the last three weeks, I've been without my psychic, but he's back this week. The return of Ayaz Sumra. Ayaz, welcome back to the show. I've missed you. The listeners have missed you. We've had some capable guests in the meantime, but it just has not been the same. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm good, Joey. How are you? It feels good to be back as well. <laughs> it's good to have you back. How was New York, by the way? Oh, New York is great. Boxing in New York, everyone loves boxing. Yeah, did you? And you watched a few fights. That you actually watched PBC on the TV, if I'm not mistaken, right? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, I watched PBC. It's a free. It's a free to air channel. Yeah. Um, so I was watching a bit of boxing there on PBC. Okay, man. All good. All good. You was uh, you was flying the box hard flag in the in in New York then, yeah, guys. Yes, definite. Around Times Square. Box Hard Podcast, follow Box Hard Podcast. <laughs> good man, good man. Right, okay, let's get on with the show. It's the two usual suspects. We're back in town here. Right, episode 96, as I said, it's going to be a little bit different. There wasn't too much going on last week in terms of action. There wasn't too much boxing last week, and there's not too much boxing this week. So part one, we're going to do the review part of the show. There's a couple of fights, really, to mention. That's it. And then we're going to bring in the news. And then we're going to bring in guest number one. Guest number one is the son of former heavyweight world champion. Uh, You know, you probably know already who that is. But yeah, it's the son of a former heavyweight world champion. He's also a boxer himself. A very good up-and-coming prospect. And the second guest, obviously, um, after the preview part of the show, the second guest is a man that's been on this show many times. So it's it's an all-American show once again. Ayaz is back from New York. We've got two American boxers boxers on last week i as was in new york we had another two american boxers on both from philly last week this week it's again an all-american show so we're going to start with the reviewing from last week there wasn't too much to mention as i said there was one fight that happened over in the arena oasis in cancun mexico one fight to mention really on this bill at lightweight uriokis gamboa 26 and 2 got in there against a man called alexis reyes alexis reyes had a record of 15 and 2 with one draw now um you know Alexis Reyes, he'd, he'd, he'd lost two of his previous six fights. He'd obviously not fought on the same level as Uriel Kis Gamboa. And a lot of people would say that Gamboa's really kind of, you know, he's in a bad place really in terms of his career. Well, he managed to pick up the W, but it was a majority decision over 10 rounds. So one judge gave it, or well, two judges actually gave it to Gamboa by one point. It was 95-94 in favour of Gamboa. And the other judge saw it a draw, obviously. 94-94 he gave it. So um, very lucky there to pick up the win. Maybe he just got it because of his name. But, you know, very, very, very close fight. Way too close for somebody of the calibre of of Uriokis Gamboa. So, um, yeah, really disappointing stuff there. And also, a fight that happened earlier this week on the Tuesday. A huge upset over in the Shimazu Arena in Kyoto, Japan. Um, the defending champion, Shinsuke Yamanaka. I'm probably saying his first name wrong. Anyway, his record was 27-0 and with two draws going into his world title defense of his WBC World Bantamweight title. He took on Luis Neri, Mexican's very own prospect he's 23 and oh good fighter um some people have actually got yamanaka on their pound for pound lists at, you know before this fight was made and here lewis neary 23 and oh picks up the win a fourth round tko victory for him when you saw the two boxers together you know neary just looked about two or three weight classes up he was absolutely huge stood next to the champion and he was too big he was too strong he overwhelmed him and as i say got the stoppage but that's a really really huge upset and a really really huge win a real um, impressive victory there especially to not only to beat yamanaka in his home you know in his home turf but actually to stop him and as early as the fourth round, it was all one way in that fight. So, Yamanaka loses his belt, racks up his first loss now, 27-0. and 0. 
uh, going into the fight now 27 and 1 he's got two draws as well and the new champion as I said Mexico's very own Luis Neri now 24 and 0 the new WBC world bantamweight champion so yeah that shakes up that division a little bit there and that's really it for the reviewing as I said just two fights to mention from last week as I said there wasn't too much action so it's now time for the news we're going to bring in Ayaz as I said we've missed him but he's back with the latest boxing news from this week Ayaz yes Sugar Shane Mosley has retired from boxing Yes, obviously we all know Sugar Shane. Um, it was a pleasure to meet him when I met him a couple of years ago at the McGuigan gym. Um, you know, a really, really nice guy outside of the ring, a really, really dangerous fighter inside of the ring, a definite Hall of Famer. We were saying on last week's show, I think it was, that three guys have retired in one week. And last week, when we mentioned those guys, Tim Bradley, Vladimir Klitschko, and Juan Manuel Marquez, um, they're all top fighters. This man, you know, he's he's certainly in the same league as those guys. Arguably, you know, one of the front runners out of the four in total just mentioned there. Um, you know, Shane Mosley, again, one of those guys that had a really good career at welterweight, just like Marquez and Bradley. Um, you know, just some of the some of the fights he's been in. If you look at his resume, he's got one of the best resumes. An absolutely phenomenal fighter was Shane Mosley. Um, you know, we saw him in the ring last time out against David Avanessian. I remember having him on the show just before that fight, and David Avanessian ended up winning that fight. Really, really impressive win. But before that, Mosley had had two knockout wins in a row. Um, you know, following his comeback to boxing because he was, you know, I think he might have retired or he was away for um, for almost two years. Returned to the ring, got two knockouts, come up against Avanesium for the world title, the interim world title, and lost that fight. And you know, it's just. It's just come over a year now. I think it's about 14 months since that loss to Avanesian. And, um, yeah, he's decided to call it a day. I think it's probably the right time. He had uh, 60 fights, winning 49 of those, 41 by knockout. He lost 10 fights. One time he was stopped in total and one draw on the resume as well. But, yeah, this man, you know, if you don't know too much about Shane Mosley, I'd be quite surprised. But this man took on pretty much everybody, never ducked anyone, a real exciting fighter, um, you know, took on the likes of Canelo, took on the likes of Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, you know, he hit Floyd Mayweather arguably with the best shot that anybody's hit Floyd Mayweather with in a professional ring. He shared the ring with former world champion Sergio Mora, Antonio Margarito, obviously the, the fights with uh, with Mayorga, Miguel Cotto, Luis Calazo, Fernando Vargas twice. You know, this man, uh, he, he just shared the ring with everybody. You know, Oscar De La Hoya, Vernon Forrest, uh, Winky Wright's on his record. It's, it's an absolutely unbelievable, unbelievable resume. And um, yeah, we, you know, once again in this month, we've lost another, another great, but you know, it's it's because they've retired. It's not because they've passed away or anything tragic like that. So um, good time to walk away from the sport. But again, the uh, the welterweight division takes a bit of a hide in there. Three top welterweights all retiring in the space of about 10, 15 days, something like that. But all the very best to Sugar Shane Mosley, a phenomenal fighter. And, you know, to go back and look at some of his fights is, you know, it's never, it's never ever a chore. And um, I'd certainly do that. If you're listening to this, try and, try and watch some of that man's fights. He was in some real, real, was he always gave it his all and like I say never ducked a single soul at any point of his career British um, cruiserweight um, Isaac Chamberlain is training is sparring with WBO world cruiserweight champion Alexander Usk in Ukraine yes Alexander Usyk um, Isaac's gone over there Obviously, we all know Isaac's a friend of the show, friend of mine. He's he's gone over there to help him out in his preparation against. Um, he's taken on Marco Huck, isn't he, in the cruiserweight world boxing super series tournament? So, yeah, you know they've picked him to come over and help spar, which is really good. You know, you know, obviously you got the likes of Lawrence Okoli, for example, who, again, don't take this the wrong way, I really like Lawrence Okoli. He's a very exciting boxer. He's a more exciting boxer than Isaac Chamberlain, let's be completely honest, but he's knocking over all these people. He's creating a lot of hype. Isaac Chamberlain's pretty happy to kind of, I don't want to say sit in his shadows, but he's the one who keeps his mouth quiet, doesn't, you know, really... 
I don't want to say perform because he does perform, but he doesn't really need the showcase knockouts. He's just a man that has got his head down. He's very focused. He's very dedicated, and he's learning. He's been away with Wilder. He sparred Joshua. You know, he's 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 now away in Ukraine, in the middle of nowhere, helping out in this in this you know in this training camp. And it's just you know it's brilliant stuff. He's just he's just soaking it all up. He really really is. And um, you know he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future, as I've said a few times on this show. Really exciting future has uh you know Isaac Chamberlain got for sure. Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor both were boxing eight ounces gloves. Yeah, obviously it's come out um I think it was just yesterday it's come out that um yeah they're gonna be wearing eight ounce gloves which is absolutely unheard of. It's usually ten ounce gloves um of a certain weight category obviously the, the you know the smaller guys can wear eight ounce and if if you're above a certain weight it, it's gotta be ten. Um yeah it's crazy they're bending the rules simply because it's Floyd Mayweather. It's it's, it's terrible stuff, really, um, you know. But I don't really know who gets the advantage in this one. I think that Mayweather's obviously going to be probably looking for the knockout. I, I, I'm guessing um, it'll be it'll be quite shocking if it goes a distance. Really, I think that's a bad performance from Mayweather, even if he shuts him out. To actually let an MMA fighter zero. Um, zero and zero his record obviously in the boxing ring to go the distance with one of the all time greats that would be terrible so yeah maybe he's just preparing for that knockout trying to give himself a little bit of an edge but also for those people that think Conor McGregor's got this you know unbelievable power I suppose they're happy about it as well so everybody's quite happy with it but in terms of actually the the fact that you know the uh, the, the Nevada State Athletic Commission are allowing this it's, it's a bit dodgy but um yeah, it is what it is. Um, American Robert Bird has been selected as the referee for the Floyd Mayweather vs. Conor McGregor fight. Yeah, Robert Bird's a man with enormous, enormous, enormous intelligence, enormous um, experience in the boxing ring. If you actually go and look, he's been refereeing. He's one of the most experienced referees in world boxing, if not the most experienced guy. He's been refereeing for something like, wow, like years and years and years and years. Like... I can't remember now, but I remember looking back at like some of the fights he's he's refereed like back in I'm sure it was back in like I want to say oh, I don't even know like 40 years ago I'm sure he's been a ref for over 40 years I could be mistaken but I'm sure he's he's been refing for over 40 years so you know that's that's unbelievable so yeah he's the right man um, you know he's he's the right man for the job I suppose but again I don't really feel like it's going to be such a competitive kind of fight but yeah I suppose a good referee for you know certainly they, we, we should certainly get a good referee for, for this, this circus of a fight yep and finally the judges have been confirmed as Bert Clement Dave Moratti and Guido Cavalleri for uh, as chosen by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the Floyd Mayweather vs Conor McGregor fight yeah um, as I say I don't I don't really see it going the distance, I don't think. So we may not need those judges. But, um, yeah, it's obviously big news. We've got to tell you guys that. Uh, the referee's important. The judges are important. The glove size is important. It's obviously big news. So, um, yeah, take of that what you will. That's it for the news. Okay, my friend. Thank you very much for that. Right, that's it with the reviewing. Only the two fights to mention, as I said. That's it with the news. It's now time to welcome, as I said, guest number one. He's the son of a former heavyweight world champion. Let's bring in guest number one. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated heavyweight prospect, Hassim Rackman Jr. Hassim, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, it's my pleasure, my friend. So, Hassim, first things first, and I start a few boxing interviews like this. I want to ask you, how did you get into boxing in the very beginning? How old were you when you first put on a pair of gloves? I probably was like four or five, maybe not even four or five years old, maybe earlier than that when I had my first boxing gloves. But, you know, I was brought up in the gym, obviously. You know, I grew up in the gym. This is this is like a lifestyle to me. I, I really don't know anything else. And obviously, um, you know, there's many boxers in boxing. I've had many boxers on this show who are sons of former boxers like yourself. And most of the time, their father had retired from boxing by the time they were born. In your case, your father started his professional career when you were three and a half years old. Was it kept a secret how your father was making a living at that time? What are the earliest memories you can remember? 
Uh, the earliest memories I can remember are, are really from New York. When we were in New York, and my father had uh, had, he he had gotten into some trouble back home. I don't remember the trouble part, but I, I remember being in New York. I remember uh, Jeremy Williams and my dad going at it. It was a lot of other uh, heavyweights up there, but Jeremy and my dad stood stood a head head and shoulders above the rest. Like they were. As far as talent wise, I've been able to see talent my whole life. So, you know, talent wise, my dad and Jeremy definitely stood out above everybody else who was out, who was out there at the camp at that time. So, you know, boxing it really comes really really comes like walking to me. And how old were you back then? When, like I say, your your earliest you know your earliest memories of your father. I maybe I may have been I may have been four, maybe maybe three and a half four years old, but I, I do still remember. And were you allowed to watch his fights when he was still boxing? Oh yeah, I've always, I've never not been able to watch a fight. I've always been able to watch my father fight. This is life and death when you get in there. So, you know, it always could be the last punch that he take he took. You know, luckily he got out of his career. You know, with health and his great mind. So, you know, he, he, we made it through one career, and now we're going through about two or three more. Absolutely. And what was the first fight you remember? of his like watching you know the first fight you remember watching of your father's first fight I remember okay the first fight that really sticks out would be uh, the Jeff Wooden fight the Jeff Wooden fight would be probably about uh, as far back as I could go I think it was in 97 so I had to be about 6 and uh, me and my brother went to the fight and it was, uh, you know, all, we didn't get to go to the fights all the time, so we were excited that we got to go to this fight. And it was my little brother's birthday. And uh, I believe they fought for the USBA Heavyweight Championship. So that's always been pretty special. He won that on my on my little brother's birthday. Oh, brilliant stuff, man, brilliant stuff. So when you were 10 years old, when you were 10 years old, when you turned 10, your father was the heavyweight champion of the world at that time. Now, that must have been a cool thing, going to school, to be able to tell your friends about that. Yeah, it was a, a really, really cool experience. Um, you know, my dad, he came to my school. He spoke to all the kids. We had a huge assembly. It was great. It was great. And then, you know, it was even better when he became heavyweight champion in the game like when I was in high school. So, you know, it, 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 it's incomparable. It's incomparable. You can't really compare a uh, normal childhood to my childhood because I was, I was doing it with the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Absolutely. Right, so let's get on to your career now. You turned pro earlier this year. You fought on April the 14th, and then seven days later you fought again. Uh, you won both of those fights by first-round knockouts. Now, there's not too much to say about those fights, to be honest, seeing as they were over so quickly. Do you want to say anything about those fights at all for those that may have not seen them? I mean, you know, that that's the goal. My goal is to get in there and do my job. My job is to win. If I can win in 40 seconds, I win in 40 seconds. If I, if I can win in 20 seconds, I win in 20 seconds. The, le- the, the least amount of time that I'm in the ring is the uh, least amount of damage I'm subjecting myself to. And that's something that my role models have instilled in me. You get in this sport to take the least amount of damage as possible. So if I can knock everybody out in the first round, I'm going to get them out of there early. And as you said there, 40 seconds, that was um, that was how long it took you to to make your debut it only lasted 40 seconds that fight of course before you knocked out your first opponent now Hasim am I allowed to bring up the Mayweather all access situation or would you rather not talk about that I mean it, it, we could talk about it but we it, 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 it depends on how far you're trying to go yeah, no, that's it. If if I if I say anything that you go, you know, that I'm happy for you to say. No, I'd, I'd rather not answer. That's completely fine. So just to remind, yeah, we you, might as well. We might go ahead. Go ahead. No, go on. Go on. Go ahead. I was waiting for you. Go ahead. Now I was going to say just to remind our listeners on 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 one of the all access programs in the build up to Floyd Mayweather versus Marcos Maidana, uh, one of their fights. I think it was fight number two. Was it? Yeah, it was the second one. The second one, yeah. So, in the build-up to that, they obviously did the the All Access program, and our listeners will probably remember there was two amateurs fighting in the ring at the Mayweather Boxing Gym, and it appeared that Floyd Mayweather had made them fight till one of them till one of them quit. Basically, you know, the fight apparently lasted in excess of thirty minutes, and no fighter was allowed a rest during the fight. Now, correct me if 
if I'm if I'm wrong about any of this in just a sec, Hassim. So Hassim's younger brother, um, Sharif, was one of the boxers in the ring, and it appeared that the the other boxer was, um, you know, it was a bit one sided from what we saw on the program it seemed like um Hassim's younger brother was taking a bit of a beating from the other boxer but once again um you know he was put in a position where he wasn't able to quit so to speak have I got any of that wrong at all uh sounds about right to me and obviously you know after you'd heard what happened you got to the gym and you wanted to basically you know confront the other guy cuz you saw the whole situation as pretty wrong, and so did all the viewers, really, you know, watching it from all over the world. Um, yeah, what can you say, and what, you know, what can you say about that whole situation? I mean, what I could say is, you know, there's been a lot of uh, publicity on the situation, and I've had a lot of feedback, both positive and negative. And, uh, you know, like you said, uh, uh, a lot of people seen it. So, you know, it it, it, it is what it is. I can't I can't change any of it. I felt as though, you know, m- my brother was harmed, and I went to, you know, protect my brother. I always do that. I don't care what, what's going on with him. I always protect my family. That's what it is, PTF. And Floyd has said a lot, you know, a lot of it was for cameras and stuff like that. Did Floyd really make them fight for that long? And if so, does he do, does he do that kind of thing? I don't know. Him? I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened when I wasn't there. All I can speak on is, you know, uh, I, I I love my brother, and if my brother's been home, I'm going to be there for him. And that's in the pro fight. That's in the amateur fight. That's in sparring. That's whatever. If my brother's hurt, I'm going to be there for my brother. Yeah, of course, of course. Now, I know that a lawsuit followed those events. What's the situation now with you and Floyd? Are you guys, are you guys cool at all? Um, I haven't seen Floyd since I've been out of, um, I, I recently was, I was sent to prison actually when the lawsuit started and I didn't get out. I just got out. I haven't seen Floyd. I haven't talked to Floyd. Okay. All right. Right. That stuff aside, you return to the ring in your third professional <clears throat> outing next Friday. You take on a man called Danielle Williams, if I'm not mistaken, who like yourself is two and oh, do you know much about him at all? Uh, you know, I do my homework. So I know he's he's an MMA fighter. He has an extensive MMA background. Uh, that's pretty much all I know on him. He has an MMA background. He he's had two professional boxing fights where he fought boxers and he got he got the upset both times. So you know, and he has a knockout. So he has some power. He has some knockouts in the uh, MMA world as well. He's supposed to be known more for striking. So this is gonna be. A little preview of what Floyd's going to do to McGregor. i just put it like that. Yeah, well said, well said. And how many fights do you want to have by this time next year, Hasim? This time next year? What's it, August? Yes, yeah, so I look about to be in a, I look to be anywhere. I look to be anywhere between 12 and 17 fights by this time next year. 12 and 17? Yeah, so okay. I, I should have 12 more fights before next August. So you'd like At to least. fight... Ideally, like once a month. Once a month, sometimes twice a month. Okay, cool, cool. And a, a huge fight that's happening in September. Everybody that we speak to, we've got to ask them about this. What's your take on Canelo versus Triple G? A huge fight. Huge fight. Huge fight for, boxing. Huge fight for uh, all the real genuine boxing fans out there. Uh, I got Canelo. I like Canelo. I think uh, Triple G... Already has a loss. Uh, I think that Canelo is a better boxer, and I don't think that Triple G is going to be able to catch him with that one punch power. But that's what makes the that's what makes the fight so exciting. Is Triple G going to back Canelo up the whole time and score on a, uh, on effective aggression, or is Canelo going to use his defense and use his effective aggression and ring generalship and take control of the fight? So you know, uh, Canelo has one punch knockout power too. So, you know, this fight could go either way. This is a very, very, very uh, – I think Canelo being the underdog is is kind of uh, uh, crazy, but uh, I, I'm taking Canelo. Yeah, I think many people are very split on it. Everybody that I speak to, um, no one's quite sure, to be honest. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's such an intriguing fight. It's such a brilliant fight. It's obviously – It's a great know, fight. Hopefully fight of the year um, afterwards – 
Um, now, we, we've kind of whizzed through this. We've only got um, one or two questions left, really, now for you, Hassim. I want to ask you this. Everybody that we speak to from the US mainly, I like to ask them, who's their favorite UK fighter from any era? Now, you know, a lot of people would actually <laughs> say easy. Lennox. A lot of people would actually say that's, Lennox that's Lewis, but you easy. may not want to say that. <laughs> Who would you say? No, nah, Lennox. Lennox for sure. Lennox, man. Lennox is the UK to me, man. I um, I feel honored to be linked with this man. He's a uh, he's a legend in the sport. He is, uh, in my eyes, I don't think anybody, any heavyweight at any time, any era would have beat him on uh, uh, the second time. He fought my dad. I think my dad probably had the biggest chance. But, uh, you know, history was written as it was, and Lennox, Lennox came out victorious. And uh, I think that he is one of the one of the most dangerous boxers of all time, and I definitely think he's the best heavyweight. Uh, uh, he, he's the best. He's, if you want, you want to see a real live heavyweight, I think Lennox Lewis is your man. Yeah. Anytime, any air, Lennox Lewis. And then uh, behind him, I will probably say Chris Eubank. Okay, okay. Lennox Lewis is a very popular answer, to be completely honest. We get that quite a lot. But the main one, and you know, if if you've if you you probably heard of him, but if you've seen some of his stuff, you're going to probably go, "Oh, damn, I forgot he was British." Do you ever remember this? This is what the the most popular answer. Do you ever remember Prince? Um, Prince, Prince. Nassim. There you go. You got it. You got yeah, it. Yeah, Prince Nassim. Of course, he's Muslim. He was one of my favorite champions of all time. <laughs> And I, I did, I did, I did forget he was British. Honestly, I did forget he was British. I hope to see him. Um, I got a little bit of news for you guys. Um, they got me scheduled right now to fight in London. So hopefully, I'll be coming over there pretty soon. Yeah, I'm supposed to fight on Frank Warren's card September 16th. Oh man! All right, I'm gonna be at Billy Dib. So I'll see. Well, well you, no, not Billy. I'm sorry, Willie Monroe Jr. and uh, what's his name? Billy Joe um, Saunders. Billy Joe Saunders, they they fighting. Um, there's a lot of great fights that night on that card, and um, right now I've been told I'm a part of it. We just waiting on confirmation from uh, Frank Warren. So once that's official, we'll be announcing it. But you guys heard it here first. Oh, excellent, man! We always we always love an exclusive. Are you able to? Are you are you able to say who you could possibly be fighting yet, or do you want to leave that? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. I haven't even. I don't even know. If I say something right now, I'll be making it up. Yeah, no, that's I, fine. Um, yeah, I don't know who they got for me. Don't really matter. I feel like I'm I'm <clears throat> prepared enough right now to fight anybody in my uh, anybody within ten fights. Anybody within ten fights. So that's anybody up up to twelve fights in the world. Okay, well, you know, it'd be great to have you over here. Um, you know, I, I should be at that, so I should get to see you, so that'd be very good. Right, anything that you want to tell our listeners at all before we let you go? Last last thing now, really, uh, um, Hassim? Follow me, follow me as I uh, chase history. There's never been a son of a heavyweight champion of the world to become heavyweight champion of the world. So that will be history in itself. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Hasim Rockin Jr. on all social media. And um, I love the UK. I can't wait to come. If not September, I'll be there before the end of the year. And uh, it's it's just major love and, and support. That's that's what it takes in this game. So, you know, support me. I support all you guys, all your champions. Um, you know, we're going to get it on. So I can't, I can't wait. Just support and follow, and I'm going to make this dream come true. Excellent, my man. Massive respect. Okay, listen, Hasim, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for giving us a piece of your time. Best of luck next Friday, and we're going to catch up again very soon, I'm sure. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, now it's time for part two on this week's show. This part, of course, if you've listened before, it's the preview part where we preview the fights coming up this weekend. There's one big card to mention, and I think we should really start with that. Let's start with the card over in the Pinnacle Bank Arena in Lincoln, Nebraska, USA. So not in Omaha, but it's still in the state of Nebraska. We're going to start with the undercard. Obviously, Nicholas Waters was supposed to be on this card. He's not now going to be on that card. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a shame, really. I wanted to see him fight after losing to Lomachenko. So let's start with um, a couple of the fights, really, on the undercard. It's actually got a really interesting undercard. Um, we're going to start with former world champion Mike Alvarado, 37-4. and 4. 
Um, obviously, he's seen better days. He's, um, his last six fights, he's only won three. He's lost the other three. He takes on a man called Sidney Sequeira, who's 26 and 12 with one draw. But it's, you know, his last six fights were even worse. He's actually only won two of his last six, and you know, he's not fought at anywhere near the level that Mike Alvarado's fought at. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but it is what it is. Also on that bill, Shakur Stevenson, the very very talented prospect. He's in a six rounder against a man called David Paz, who's got a record of four and three with one draw. So. You know, that should be a showcase victory for Shakur Stevenson, a really exciting young talent under the guidance of Andre Ward, of course. Um, also on that bill, I guess it was on last week's show, Bryant Jennings, 19-2, and two, taking on Daniel Martz, 15-4 and four with one draw. It's an eight-rounder, that one, of course, at heavyweight. Daniel Martz, um, for those that don't know, he shared the ring once with Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker got rid of him inside the first round, so... I'm not expecting too much from him, but obviously Bryant Jennings hasn't been in the ring for um, for 20 months, as he reminded us last week. So it's going to be good to see him back in the ring. And of course, his arch rival, Dillian White, also on this bill as well. I remember you know, when they, when they both met in London, Dillian White had a lot to say. It was all a bit nasty, to be honest. Dillian White, 20 and 1, takes on Malcolm Tan. Malcolm Tan, 24 and 5. Um... Malcolm Tan's actually had three fights in the last 10 years. He decided to take a nine-year break from boxing. I'm not quite sure why, but yeah, he shouldn't really put up too much resistance. Dillian White's going to probably look good stopping him, I'd imagine. That's an eight-rounder as well at heavyweight. Also on that bill, Mike, yes indeed, Reed. I remember having him on the show ages ago now. He's 22-0 and at this stage of his career. He's fighting at welterweight against Robert Frankel, who's got a record of 35-17 and with one draw. All the very best to Mike Reed. Also on the bill, a light heavyweight Alexander Gvodzdik fighting um, a man called Craig Baker. Craig Baker, 17-1. and one. Decent fighter, really, but um, you know, he's not going to be good enough for me against uh, Gvodzdik who's looking very, very good here. Of course, he puts his NABF light heavyweight title on the line as well. Gvodzdik 13-0. Should be another win, and I'm also expecting something um, something impressive from him. And now the main event, we've kind of whizzed through this card. As I said, uh, you know, it's been shown on Sky as well, we should mention, over in the UK. So I'm looking forward to that. This one at Super Lightweight, Terence Crawford, 31-0, and taking on Julius Indongo, 22-0. and It is for the WBO and WBC World Super Lightweight titles, which are... Uh, Terence Crawford's belts and also the IBF and WBA Super World Super Lightweight titles which are Julius Ndongo's so Ndongo's got two titles Crawford's got two titles it's for all four pieces of silverware we don't see this too often in boxing it's a pure pure 100% unification winner takes all the belts both men undefeated somebody's O's got to go really really intriguing fight we're going to be speaking um, very shortly to a man that has just left camp with Terence Crawford. Just this week, he's left Terence Crawford's camp, so we're going to talk about that with the guest coming up. Um, yeah, obviously, Terence Crawford, you know, some people have got him in their pound for pound list. I, as I'm one of those people as well, I think he's absolutely phenomenal. But again, even though we keep saying it about Julius Indongo, Julius Indongo, to some extent, is still an unknown quantity. Got that first round knockout against Edward Troyanovsky, took on Ricky Burns, who I've been saying for ages is well past it. Pretty much shut him out of that fight. A little bit hard to watch at times. He completely beat the living daylights out of Ricky Burns. Um, you know, and we were kind of relying on Indongo to tire late in that fight, and he didn't tire late for me. I kind of felt that, you know, the engine was the only kind of chance that Ricky Burns had in that fight, because Ricky Burns has got a phenomenal engine, but Indongo didn't seem to tire, and certainly didn't seem to tire enough. Um, the IBO world title was supposed to be on the line as well, but Indongo decided to not pay the fees for that. You can't really blame him. Um... And obviously, in the other corner, the phenomenal Terence Crawford. Terence Crawford, obviously, a proven phenomenal fighter. Um, you know, the way he can just switch stance from southpaw to orthodox, and he can look 100% in both stances. 
unbelievable fighter really and truly one of the most exciting fighters to watch he seems to have it all but again we cannot overlook in dongo we just don't know how good he is yet for me you know so really intriguing fight I know that we're both going to side with Crawford, um, Ayaz, but, you, you know, you can't overlook Ndongo. He's a good fighter, man. Oh, yes, Ndongo's a very good fighter. But the thing is, right, you look, we're seeing Crawford, in my opinion, the pound for pound. I reckon I'm, uh, if I'm going to go for a win, if I'm going to go for a win and how it's going to happen, I'm going to go for a Crawford winner on points, yeah? And I reckon if Crawford wins this fight, he's going to move up to 147 after this fight. Yeah, I mean, I think... Yeah, I think most people um, most people know that he's he's eyeing a move up to one four seven. He's just really waiting to prove he's the number one man at one forty. If there was any more doubters, I don't think there is though. But um, you know, Julius Ndongo is a tricky southpaw man. I, I mean, I really like him. I, I wish both men the very best of luck. What a huge upset it would be for Ndongo. He fought over in Russia, beat Troyanovsky. Fought over in Scotland, beat Ricky Burns. Now he's going over to Nebraska. Could you imagine what would happen if he? beat Terence Crawford over there it would be unbelievable he'd actually go down he'd get that that famous um that famous list I've got you know the fighter not of the fighter of the year but the fighter of the last 18 months he'd have to be up there with a nomination of that um I like Indongo though man I, I do I know that he's been um he's been over there now for a couple of days and the reception he got when he was doing a public workout loads of people were coming in saying easy work easy work obviously fans of Bud Crawford but um yeah, a really good fight, man. That's all I can say about it. It's just, we love seeing these fights. Two undefeated guys, two legit world champions for all the marbles, man. It's, you cannot complain about it. You cannot blame either guy. And, you know, Ndongo deserves a big payday. I hope he's getting that in this fight here. And, um, you know, made a best man win. Made a best man win. But Crawford is a bit special, and I think he's going to showcase that in this fight. Usually puts on, um, you know, a good performance in front of his fans. And, yeah, we will have to wait and see. But really intriguing stuff for Saturday night fantastic to have at least one card on um, that's it for that Bill moving over now to next Tuesday next Tuesday so this will be Tuesday the 22nd so next Tuesday but of course by the time we do the show next week the results would have already come in so let's preview this card here um, this one's happening in Las Vegas Nevada the promoter of this card is Floyd Mayweather despite he's fighting four days later himself it's in Las Vegas Nevada the same place as he's fighting obviously but it's at the Sam's Town Hotel. A um, couple fights to mention on this bill. Former world champion Juan Carlos Payano, 18 and 1, takes on Alexis Santiago, 21 and 4, with one draw. That's a 10 rounder at Bantamweight. Also on that bill, Ishe Smith, he's up at middleweight now. His record 29 and 8. Um, he takes on a man called Paul Venezuela Jr., who's 20 and 5. Don't know too much about him. That's a 10 rounder there, of course, at middleweight. Ishe Smith's had a real tough time. He's had a real bad year. I think we've all heard about his, um, his, you know, his. I don't think it was his ex wife, but I think it was the mother of a couple of his children. She was obviously randomly shot in the back of her head by um, a completely random attacker outside a shopping mall in America. She was sitting at a bench with headphones in and someone came straight up behind her with a shotgun and blew her head off. So horrific stuff for Ishe Smith and you know, we're behind him. That's that's unbelievable stuff that you know, for someone to, to, to go through an event like that is you know, it's it's, it's gut checking, especially for a man who has to be on his A game to provide for his family. You know, if he's if he's thinking about stuff like that and he ends up walking onto a punch, it could all be over for him. So, very very tough stuff to deal with when you're you know an athlete of that caliber. Obviously, a former world champion as well. Um, also on that bill at lightweight, Jamel Herring, 16 and one. He's in a 10 rounder against Ladarius Miller, 13 and one. We will be speaking to Jamel Herring very, very shortly. Saul Rodriguez is on the bill as well. His record 21 and 0 with one draw. His opponent yet to be announced. He's at lightweight as well. And the final fight to mention, his opponent's yet to be announced as well. But his record is 40 wins, seven losses, and one draw. Friend of the show, super lightweight from Britain, but the only British part of the money team. It's, of course, Ashley Theophane. He gets out again. We wish him the very best of luck for next Tuesday. And that's really it with the preview. And we've done the review in. There was only two fights to mention, if you want to call that the review in. There was the news. Ayers is back in town. There's been guest number one. There's been the preview in. And now the final thing to do before we wrap up episode 96 is, of course, to welcome guest number two. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a dear friend of the show and also a lightweight prospect under the guidance of Al Heyman. It's, of course, Mr. Jamel Herring. Jamel, welcome back on the show once again. Hey, man. It's great to be back, man. Great to be back. It's great to have you back. So, Jamel, we last spoke in the build-up to your last fight. You ended up winning that fight because your opponent's corner stopped it after three rounds. Uh, I don't think I saw the fight. Could you just walk us through quickly what went down and how you performed? Um, you know, I, I knew um, I knew my opponent was a, a tough guy. He's never been he's never been stopped. So you know, I went out there with a um, little conscious, you know, started out boxing, and you know, just just um, sort of feeling my way through the through the through the rounds. But um, once I seen that um, that he had nothing to basically offer anything back in terms of a big threat, you know, that's when I started taking a little bit more risk, started break out, basically putting down to the body a lot in that, in that fight. Which made him, um, you know, basically keep his guard, keep bring his guard back down. And I just, I just went, you know, body head, body head. Um, you know, the second and third round, and then he never responded to the bell in the fourth, and but he basically quit on the stool. And that's just how that's just how the story went. Excellent, man. Excellent. Again, as you say there, to be the first man to stop him. Really impressive stuff. Um, also, former opponent of yourself, obviously, Denis Shafikov. He just lost the fight um, a few weeks back now to a friend of yours, Robert Easter. A lot yes. of people were saying that the scorecards were a little bit wide, but they thought the right man won. Were you surprised with the outcome at all? What did you make of it? Um, like I, I was surprised with the scores. I'm not gonna be biased, you know. The scores, the scores are a little bit, a little bit crazy, especially when you got, I think two of the judges had it as a blowout. But um, I feel like I feel like the right man did win at the end of the day. I thought Robert did enough to win. I just thought it was um, you know, a closer, more competitive fight than um what the judges had basically displayed on on, on paper. But even Robert had reached out to me afterwards and said that um he gave he gave Shavkov his respect. Said Shavkov was a tough guy, you know, he really was. But um, like I said, the right man won. It's just that, um, you know, the judges made it, didn't get it a black eye with, in terms of the scoring. Yeah, absolutely. So you're now fighting this coming Tuesday, the 22nd. If I'm not mistaken, Jamel, is it a Mayweather promotion show? Yes, sir. Uh, it's a Mayweather card to basically um, start off the whole Mayweather McGregor week. And um, that'll be the first, that'll be the first call in our broadcast in that week. Yeah, yeah, because obviously it's a Tuesday night. You're you're going to be taking on Floyd Mayweather's young prospect, uh, Ladarius Miller. What do you know about him, Jamel? It's, it's a name that um, I'm not too familiar with, in all honesty. Um, he, he's a guy. He's a guy that I'm I'm, I'm familiar with. Um, you know, he's, he's also a southpaw. Um, nothing again, nothing against him, anything like that. But um, this is basically more of a step up for him than me, of course. But I'm still gonna um, I'm still going in there taking it as um you know a big fight you know because um, a win is a win and it can lead on to bigger things. But um like I said um I feel like you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm basically his first you know real opponent and you know yeah as you see with me I, I've been there with a couple of guys that's uh, you know that's had winning records and um you know basically I can some some games so that I can learn from even even my defeat you know the shot um you know was um uh, was running was a running point in my career but um. Like I'm still going in there, um, like taking this fight seriously. I'm just trying to handle business and move on to the next thing. And do you think this will be your last fight of this year? Um, I hope not. Um, I really want to um, close out the um, end of the year with another fight, at least around November, hopefully. So, um, like I said, I, I know I have to go basically make a big impression with this fight. But like I said, I can't look past my opponent. And I just, you know, take care of business here and hopefully, you know what I'm saying, look forward to something, something next. That's what it's so, Jamel, right now, currently, you're not ranked by any of the top four sanctioning bodies, but providing you get through this upcoming fight, what would you be looking for? Would you be looking for an all-American fight between yourself and another fellow American? Most of the, the uh, best fighters, it's really. Very, Most, it, the, it's I'll funny just, that you said yeah, that, though. Know. Yeah, go on, go on. Because uh, um, I'm actually, I'm actually, um, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more interested in... Um, Terry Flanagan, um, Felix Vidal fight. You know, I'm really um, I was disappointed that the, uh, the fight couldn't go through as planned. You know, Terry got a, he got injured. Hopefully, he's um recovering well. But um, you know, that that's the main fight that I'm actually I'm not, I'm not looking for the All American fight right now, obviously. But um, like I said, that fight really um interests me. And um, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the winner. I mean, obviously, I hope that um my my um honest opinion, I hope that um. You know, Flanagan can actually pull the win because I would love to even come over to the UK and fight because, you know, I love it out there. I had a great time like, the last couple of times I've been in the UK, you know, so I don't mind going back out to the UK for another fight. But um, 
that's one fight that really interests me right, right now. Because I was going to just say that there's there's a lot of lightweights in America, and they're all from Ohio. Like some of the best guys are from Ohio at lightweight. Obviously, you know yourself, um, Robert Easter, Ryan Martin, Raynell Williams coming up as well. Um, all good fighters. Yeah. So it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm close to all. It's crazy. I'm close to all all all, all of those guys. Um, you know, Ryan's a good good friend of mine from so, um, from the amateurs, of course. I know him right now for years as well. And, and like you said, you already know that um, I'm close with um Robert especially. But um, like I said, my my goal is um, you know, to be basically um, or like a, a, a true champion and um, you know, and go and you know, take a title from the champion, even if I have to go on your home turf. I want to ask you about another fight. I know you said you're more kind of looking international for, for your next opponent if you get through this this fight on Tuesday. But I do want to mention, I think a good clash of styles, and I could be wrong because, again, you're, you know, you're a nice guy. Um, a lot of people like you, of course. You may be really good friends with this guy, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. You and Hank Lundy, <laughs> I like that fight. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, my guy. My, my oh, guy. All right. Can Forget I, I said it. <laughs> Yeah, but um, like I, I, that, that's been mentioned, you know, in the past before. But um, like I said, um, me and Hank, I, like we, 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 because um, we basically he basically stayed with me for a while when he when he came to camp. That's how we got oh, close. Man. But um, yeah, yeah, that that, that um, I know, like we had some a lot of wars and sparring and everything like that. But now I, I respect Hank, and like I said, you never know with Hank anyway. Hank could be fighting one thirty five today, and then one forty tomorrow. So yeah, <laughs> you just He's... never know with Hank, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got a lot of love for Hank. He's he's a bit crazy, but we do like him. I mean, when he was yeah, last on the show, crazy. when he was last on the show, he said, yeah, I'm I'm a beast at 135, but I'm not turning down any fights if I get offered it at 147, <laughs> you know? So yeah, exactly. He's, uh, yeah, you that, just that, never that's know. He's, he's, he's an old-school Philadelphia fighter, and you know, I got a lot of love and respect for him, and I just wish him the best of You know, yeah. I actually, um, I forgot to mention, um, I had, I had basically came to camp, from um, one of his recent opponents, which was um, Terrence Crawford. You know, I've been out there working with Terrence Crawford the last six, six um, weeks. And um, that basically helped me a lot in terms of learning experience and um, confidence boost. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm, really, I'm real close to Terrence Crawford and his team and his camp out there. And I got, I'm got, i hoping they can pull out this. Well, I know for sure, in my belief, that he'll pull out this win this coming, this coming weekend. You know, so I just wanted to point that out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As we're going to talk, just because you mentioned Terence, now I've got to say, what did you make of his uh, his, his McGregor video? Do you see that? Oh my God, he he's a, he's a clown, man. He's a real clown. <laughs> like Terence is all business in the ring, but he can he can he can be uh, he can have fun outside of the ring, you know, and play around and, and joke. So I, I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody thought he did quite well. Um, yeah, so four days after your fight, again, um, obviously the promoter of the card you're fighting on, Floyd Mayweather, he returns to the ring against Conor McGregor. I kind of feel like I shouldn't even be asking this question, but have you got any interest in that fight at all? Um, honestly, it's not that really to be honest with you. Um, I just said, um, I just said it's more, it's more entertainment than competitive at the end of the day. If anything, I'm more interested in the, um, you know, the undercard bouts, like you know, Javante Davis, um, Badu Jack. You know, I'm, I'm more interested in, in those fights. You know, like especially on um, Badu Jack's fight about Nathan Cleverly, which is, I believe is a good fight. Yeah. You know, probably one of the most competitive fights on the card, if you if you ask me. But um, don't do. I mean, like I said, um, like I said, uh, the, main, the, the main event is more of entertainment. You know, but um, I feel like to like I said, um, the Badu Jack Cleverly fight is going to be real competitive. Um, I actually like um, making that. I think it's a good. I think it's a good box. I, I also like um, Bobby Jack as well. Um, I feel like um, we don't know too much about Javante Davis as an opponent, but I feel like you know he'll, he'll successfully defend his title that night as well. So like I said, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna tune in as a, as a fan, thank you. But like I said, my my main um the fight I'm really more interested in is um, the Jack um, Crosby fight. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think that that is probably the fight of the night in terms of you know the whole build. That's the that's the fight that attracts me the most to it. Um, another big fight, a true fight, uh, really and truly the best fight in world boxing at the moment. Um, a couple weeks later, Triple G and Canelo. Everybody I speak to, I've got to get their opinion on it. How do you see that one going, Jamel? Um, at, 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 at the beginning, I was was leaning a lot towards. Um, Golovkin on this one, 
But as I'm watching how um how Canelo is training in terms of fight, you know, I, I'm giving him a little bit of a chance to actually pull off something. But um, like I said, I, I'm still leaning towards uh, Lebanon, but I, I don't see I don't see a knockout in this fight or anything like that. You know, I'm, you, you, I, you'll be lucky if you even see anybody get hurt. But um, I don't I don't think everybody's going like some people feel that like. Well, just blow past and knock him out. But I don't think uh, I don't think that he he's that he can pull that off the Canelo. Canelo's a tough guy. Um, great, great pot, um, boxing pedigree. Um, real, real, real fast and sharp. You know, you know he, he's not as fast on his feet, but when he lets his hands go, you know he has great he has great speed and combination. So we'll just have to see what um you know how good luck can get deal with that. But I know like good luck is really motivated to this fight. It's the fight that actually for the last couple of years. So that, that's a fact, you know, that's, that's like all the toss to me now, you know. So I'm really interested in seeing that matchup. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Jamil, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think before you told me that you're a little bit of a fan of Luke Campbell, or have I got that awfully wrong? Um, yeah, I respect, I respect Luke. I respect Luke. Um, I, um, I actually came to his defense of, um, when the fight was um, announced between him, him and Jorge Linares. Um, not too long ago on um, I believe it was Twitter because people felt like um, you know yes we all know Jorge Linares is very skillful strong and sharp but I feel like you know Luke Luke is um, he know he know he's getting stuff into actually Luke had options you know he was also the number one mandatory to Mikey Garcia you know the Mikey Garcia title as well and um, you know his team decided to go with um, Linares who's the um, basis the, the lineal champion of the division so you gotta give Luke respect for that. Um, I give him a fighting chance. You know, anybody, anybody has a chance in the sport. You know, that's why we, that's why we have things called upsets. But um, you know, I, I wish him the best of luck. You know, maybe, you know, depending on how this, how this fight goes, maybe that could be a, a, a potentially, you know, what I'm saying, fight in the future. But um, like I said, um, I wish him all the best of luck. And um, he, like I said, Jorge Linares, not to take on the phone, he's a great fighter as well. But you know, some, this could be the passing of the torch. You never know. I mean, Anthony Joshua did it with um, with Vladimir Klitschko, so you just may never know. Yeah, it's, it's a strange one. I mean, most people over here, because, you know, it's funny with the UK fans, because some fans from different countries, I'm not going to point the finger at any one nation, but some fans get behind their yeah. fighter and literally say, you know, he's going to win. For example, I will say, there's a lot of Irish people who believe that McGregor's going to knock Mayweather out and stuff like that. But over here in the UK, they're quite, I don't know, the fans are quite, they know boxing. That's that's what I will say. So a lot of people over here, even yeah. though it'd be nice to get behind Luke Campbell, a lot of people over here are actually saying no. He's got no chance in this fight. Obviously, you know. And, and I mean, and I can understand that because they most most who actually like they who know boxing, they say it's not because they don't feel Luke is good. They just feel that is the timing is wrong at times, and um, you know, Luke just needs more experience. And I can agree to those things. So I can understand. Even when people, you know, saying who who do, who are not biased and they just just giving it to giving it to you how they feel about it, so I can I can you know saying see you know why they will pick you know Linares over over Campbell. But like I said, I, you know, I'm not I'm not counting him out. You know, like I said, um, Linares has obviously the great experience. He, he's um, he's fought all over the world. He's fought you know great fighters. You know, just as good as him as well. So um, like I said, it's a big step up. Like I said, um, Luke had Luke had options. But he went with the you know the lineal champion of the world, and you can't be mad at him about that. So I give him all the respect in the world for that. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. He's uh, obviously Linares is from uh, Venezuela, but he lives in Japan, and I think he recently just moved to the UK. He's training over here at the moment. Yeah, Campbell. He's there, he's there. Oh, he's a, yeah, he's a globe <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and Campbell, obviously from the UK, but he trains in Florida, and for some reason the fight's happening randomly in Inglewood. It, it, it doesn't make much sense to me, but um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, we, yeah, you know. I didn't think that either. I, I didn't get the whole, like, what are they, like, what are they aiming at in terms of, like, throwing <laughs> the fight? It was just, like, everywhere, like, because I was saying the same thing, I was wondering myself, and you just gave me the answer. I was like, is, is Luke still training in Florida? Or? <laughs> like, yeah. you know? It's crazy. crazy man. It is crazy, but that's boxing for you, right? That's it from me, uh, really, Jamel. Is there anything else you want to add just before we let you go at all? Um, I just want to say, you know, thank you for having me on again. It was great talking to you, man. And um, you know, people can they know how to reach me at Twitter and Instagram at Jamel Henry, one word. And um, like I said, I look forward to speaking to you after Tuesday. So you know, um, 
like I said, I feel like, you know, great things have come with a victory here for me. So I'm just, like, really excited just to get the ball rolling. And like I said, hopefully after this, you know, um, after this fight, I can get potentially ranked at finally in one of these sanctioned bodies. But um, like I said, my um, my eyes are set on the um, um, plan to get the day off fight whenever they get decided to make it. So we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Okay, listen, my friend, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. You know that. Best of luck for next Tuesday, and we're going to catch up sometime after for sure. All right, man. Take it easy, man. Okay, this wraps up episode 96 of the Box Hard Podcast. I've been your host, Joey Coastman. I as Sumra has been I as Sumra. Big thank you to our two guests on this week's show. The son of a legend, but very much a top prospect in his own right, Hassim Rackman Jr. And of course, one of boxing's true nice guys, the former Marine turned boxer, Jamel Herring. As always, it's been a pleasure creating this audio boxing show for all of you. Please like, please retweet, please share share please comment and please leave us a review if you get a chance on itunes it means a lot we'll be back next week with another big show as always until next time thanks for listening